Hi everybody, my name is Chris Collison. Yes, we're doing quantum mechanics. Um, we're up to lecture 19. We have um, developed a Schrodinger equation for the rigid rotor. We have uh, recognized that that Schrodinger equation um, really is built around uh, the recognition that the rigid rotor um, the, the R value doesn't change. So what we have to think about is just the theta value, which is the sort of the, the angle between the North Pole and the South Pole. And then we've also got our equatorial angle, which is phi. So theta is the North to South Pole angle and phi is the equatorial angle. And we separated the Schrodinger equation using our uh, method of separation of variables into two pieces. And uh, what we're going to look at today is solving uh, the relatively straightforward um, uh, differential equation associated with that phi function. So let's take a look. So let's look first of all at this um, phi equation. And I think many of you will be able to recognize that the solution or the possible solutions to these uh, um, this, to this differential equation is going to be equal to um, a sub m e to the i m phi. But we also do have uh, a second uh, solution. So the possibility here is that phi of phi is also equal to a minus m, a sub minus m e to the minus i m phi. Uh, what we recognize, of course, is when we take the, the second, so we have a second derivative in here. When we take the second derivative of these particular expressions, um, of course, i squared is equal to minus 1. And the uh, the m comes down, that gives us the, the m squared that's in this right-hand side of the equation. And then, of course, we return the eigenfunction. Um, so you're going to see that these are uh, 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 valid um, uh, solutions. Um, now, another thing we, we're going to think about here is that, remember, the phi um, angle is the angle that, um, that goes, around the, goes around the equator. And so, uh, you know, we, we can recognize that, you know, it goes from 0 to 2 pi, but of course our function can continue. So we, we've got to recognize that... Um, of course, from our rules from quantum mechanics, that this function um, must be single valued. But, but phi is the angle around the equator. Uh, so, you know, what, what that really means is, is you can't have uh, a, a different value on a subsequent rotation. So, what this means is this is effectively a kind of a boundary condition. So we've got to say that the phi function here uh, for phi plus 2 pi, so in other words, any time we've gone around that equator once already, um, we need to get exactly the same value here as we would on the first time around. And so from from this, what we can start to write down. Let's let's look, for example, as at, at the at the plus at this solution, the plus case. Um, so we've got e to the i m. What we write down is phi plus two pi um, is equal to. It must be equal to a sub m e to the i m multiplied by phi, right? So what we can then do is, is on the left hand side we can expand this so we're going to end up with uh, a sub m uh, e to the i m phi multiplied by uh, e to the i m 2 pi and that's going to be equal to a sub m e to the i m phi so what this means of course is that this expression in here must be equal to 1 for this equation to be valid. Um, we can do the same thing, by the way, let's stick with, with green. We can do the same thing with the, the minus m term. So a sub minus m e to the minus i m phi 
plus two pi. You know, so so either solution is is valid from the start, that must be equal to e sub minus m, or a sub minus m, e to the minus i m phi. Um, and so again, we do the same thing. We expand this, so a to the minus m uh, e to the minus i m phi um, multiplied by, and that would be e to the minus i m 2 pi, and that would be equal to a to the minus m e to the minus i m phi. Okay, so again in here, let's kind of be symmetric in here. So this term must also be equal to 1 in order for both sides of our equation in green there to be equivalent. So what this suggests to us is that that uh, e to the plus or minus i m 2 pi must be equal to 1. So how can that uh, happen? So we re remember uh, Euler's formula. So let's take a look at Euler's formula in here and we recognize that e to the plus or minus, we can write these both down, e to the plus or minus i 2 pi m is equal to cosine 2 pi uh, m plus or minus i sine 2 pi m and we know that this must be equal to 1. So okay it turns out that we can think about different values of n that would allow this left hand side to be equal to 1 and it turns out that um, you know if we think about this when m is equal to zero, right? Cosine zero is equal to one. Sine zero is equal to zero. So um, we we have a solution when n, m is equal to one. Uh, m is equal to zero. We also recognize that when m is a, a an integer plus or minus one or or plus or minus two, um, etc. What we find here, you know, when, when let's say m in here is plus one. Uh, we find that cosine 2 pi or cosine um, uh, 4 pi or, or, or cosine uh, 6 pi is always going to be equal to plus 1. And every time we've got, you know, 2 pi uh, in here for the sine term, 2 pi, um, 4 pi, 6 pi, that sine term is going to be equal to 0. So we recognize that the um, the numbers for m fall out of the mathematics, so they must be so m must be equal to zero plus or minus one or plus or minus two in order to kind of maintain this single valued approach in here as we move around the equator of this particular system. This allows for the single valued situation. Um, and I guess lastly, um, what, what we can write in here is, is the final version. So um, let's, let's come back up to the last piece of space on, on the page in here and state that the solution that we end up with actually is phi or phi is equal to a sub m e to the i m phi. Um, why do we need to, to rule out? Why can we kind of say, yep, we don't need the second solution? Well, it turns out that, that when m is equal to minus 1, um, uh, we end up exactly getting the solution that we just kind of discounted. So it turns out, really, since m itself uh, can be minus 1 or plus 1, um, then we only need the solution that we've got up here and uh, we only need this particular solution we only need this solution to work in here okay so now we finally have um, our solution the the last piece of this of course is to say well okay it's not normalized yet so after all that trying to push this all into one slide let's go to the next page i want to say yes we're happy with our with our solution. So here's our solution. Uh, again, let's write it down. Is equal to a sub m e to the i m 
phi. Um, but what we need to do, of course, is, is normalize this. So, of course, how do we normalize something? We're going to take all the values that we care about. So we're only going to do one loop around the equator in here. We're going to throw in our um, complex conjugate for our solution, our eigenfunction in here, multiplied by the original eigenfunction, um, d phi. And uh, we're going to plug in, so we're gonna, we've got to square those two. Uh, the constant is going to be a, a, um, a, a square. We'll pull that out. And um, what else can we say? Well, again, we recognize, by the way, that this is a, the complex conjugate of e to the i m phi. So, of course, that's e to the minus i m phi phi and then this expression in here is e to the plus i m phi and when we multiply e to the minus i m phi by e to the plus i m phi what we end up getting of course so we multiply these two together we get e to the zero which is equal of course to one so this expression ends up being a sub m squared we'll keep our limits in here two pi and zero so this ends up being one d phi, and um, let's move down in here. Loads of space in this particular case. So what we now end up with is a m squared, and we've got in here phi, and the limits are two pi and zero, which is equal to, and that's of course equal to one, right? So if we're normalized, right? This is what I failed to to state. Um, right up here the normalization condition of course means that we've got to have this integral over the the limits the total limits of the system uh, must be equal to one so there's our uh, our normalization condition so we end up with a sub m squared multiplied by two pi and that is equal to one and so therefore the final answer here is that uh, a sub m must be equal to one over the square root of two pi. And so our final answer, our final solution is, is our solution. And we're gonna we're gonna write this in terms of m, because we can recognize m as being a quantum number. So that phi equation is equal to one over two pi to the half, the square root of two pi, multiplied by e to the i m phi and we are going to remember and recognize that m can take the value 0, plus or minus 1, plus or minus 2, plus or minus 3, etc. That concludes our um, review of how to solve the phi function. That was relatively straightforward. Now let's turn our attention to theta. So thanks for your attention.